Thank you. So my name is Dominique Atkin, and I've been with uh, a company called Medimune for some time, uh, located uh, next to Washington. And uh, one of our focus for uh, innovation in the treatment of uh, patients with uh, lupus is to target uh, interferon alpha. Uh, the very good news, as you heard today, is that there are multiple attempts to target different uh, approaches and pathways to, uh, to treat this disease, and this is one of them. We are less advanced than uh, the three previous uh, compounds, but uh, uh, hopefully we'll be able to make uh, some progress and bring some difference at the end of, at the, end of the game. So interference, I mean, you all probably know about interferons. In, these are cytokines which are part of uh, uh, the first line of defense in the organ body, first line of, depend, of defense against viral infection. So you have different types of interferon, type 1, type 2, type 1 alpha, beta, omega, and so on. Um, all of these uh, interferons are increased in depending on the type of uh, viral infections. As John said, during the past years, a lot of fundamental research has shown that in many patients, uh, in the tissues of many patients with lupus, uh, this interferon, and especially interferon alpha, was elevated, and it came out that this cytokine seems to play a central role uh, in the pathogenetic process of the disease. So once you have this kind of, uh, I would say, fundamental research evidence, you can, I would say, uh, with the current technology, manufacture an antibody uh, which is going to target and to bind uh, with this excess of interferon. And by binding with this uh, excess of interferon, uh, you will reduce the impact of the interferon alpha on the immune cells. You can see on this slide at, uh, at, uh, that this interferon is generated by what is called here PDC, meaning plasma cytoid dendritic cells. I'm not going to go into the details, but once it's out there, it has an impact of inactivating multiple cells in the immune system, and at the end of the day, increasing the generation of autoantibodies, which, as you know, are leading to uh, the organ damage in, uh, in lupus. So by targeting this, you have a chance to slow down uh, the, the process in lupus. On the top left of the slide, you see, I mean, it's a small, you see the, uh, this is the antibody which was generated by uh, Medimmune to bind uh, to this interferon alpha. It's the first one. We have other antibodies uh, also targeting the same uh, interferon pathway. This one is in the clinic, uh, and it's currently in under investigation in a couple of phase one, two studies. And we have another one which is just uh, starting in the first time in human studies, and we have a couple of other coming back later on. Next slide. So now, what have we also found? And this is maybe something you haven't seen so often yet. This is called a heat map. Uh, what is a heat map? So with, with the current technology, when you look at whole blood cells from patients with, uh, with lupus, uh, you can uh, use some kinds of microchips and you can have a look at the genetic and genomic expression uh, of uh, the different genes in, this, in the cells of these patients. It's very hard to measure uh, interferon alpha directly in blood, but you can detect in the blood cells uh, if there is excess interferon around, because you can detect at this point, uh, using an mRNA chip, uh, you can detect if some of these cells have excess uh, upregulation or activation of uh, interferon-inducible genes. So what we found is that when using this technology, this genomic and, and mRNA technology, so approximately 70% of the patients with suffering with lupus have an uh, excess of inducible uh, interferon genes in their whole blood. So, and this is something which is of high interest because it may open, I say it may open, it may open the way to some personalized medicine in uh, to treat patients with, uh, uh, with lupus. For example, you could uh, develop a diagnostic test uh, uh, use it on patients and see if, if the patients have high expression of uh, inducible interferon genes that could be better responder to this kind of antibody. I'm saying it's, it may, it's work in progress, uh, but it's a bit of a different approach which is called personalized. Next slide. 
So we have here I'm only showing a couple of uh, results of a first time in human in study, meaning we, this was the first time we gave an infusion of this uh, antibody to some patients with uh, lupus who accepted to participate uh, to this study. And uh, when we looked at this study, uh, we found, uh, when we gave this infusion, we found some very uh, compelling results. And on the top right, you have a heat map here of a patient uh, who received the infusion. Uh, on the x-axis, you have the time, and uh, the y-axis, each, each line represents uh, a different gene. And you can see that before receiving the infusion at day zero, I mean, everything was red, meaning high activity of inducible genes, genes. And up from the next day, everything turned more or less green. So saying that the, the inter antibody was having an effect on this overexpression of uh, these uh, genes. And at the same time, in these very few patients, uh, you can see at the bottom left, uh, some changes uh, in one patient we have observed in, skin, in typical skin lesions, uh, going from day zero, day seven, day 14, and day 28. So it's very preliminary from this study, only a few patients. So now we have a couple of studies going on. We should have results pretty soon. And if everything goes well, maybe we'll have a chance to go into a large phase three investigation. But this is news I cannot give you today, and I hope really much to give them to you later on. So this is the work we have in progress uh, for lupus on this uh, interferon pathway. We also are looking at other antibodies, but they are still uh, quite early stage, and we may talk about them later on. Thank you very much. Thank you.